Salutations, my Fallout lovers. It is Maddie here today, and I wanted to share a very special story with you guys today. This is not a video about Bethesda and Fallout 4 mechanics in the game. No, this is about just how impactful video games can be to us and those around us. And it was something that when I read, I felt the need to share because it's something that, as I said, can really impact us and show just how strong video games are. And before I get into anything, I wanted to thank Andy, the person who wrote both these Reddit posts, for sharing his story and how things developed because I know that isn't easy and I hope you're doing well. But this is something that's really special and I think could make for a sentimental moment for all of us gamers as we experience this together and we can feel for Andy, a fellow Fallout fan, in his time of need. So both these Reddit posts will be linked down below. And without further ado, I will now share the story. I've spent over 500 hours in this game, this game being Fallout 4, partially due to the fun gameplay, the new survival mode, and just the game in general. My dad passed away last year at the age of 56. I didn't take it well. When Automatron came out, I made a bipedal sentry bot with hammer saws and named it after my father. So in a way, I was traveling the wasteland with my father. He had the body type of a sentry bot and liked to do woodworking as a hobby, hence the hammer saws, and I can actually relate to that because my dad's a woodworker as well. The name of the bot was GR36, as his name was Greg. Anywho, it let me bond with my dad. I just wish the sentry bot voice had more interesting things to say, but it's all right, and I agree with you there as well, And However, today, my younger brother, age of 24, is in the ICU. They don't think he'll make it. It's diabetes-related stuff. He and I both love the Fallout franchise, always theorizing what we'd do if the events of Fallout occurred in real life. He always wanted to be a super mutant, and I wanted to be a ghoul, so we could travel the world together forever. Though I'm not sure if super mutants have an unlimited lifespan, but I digress. With contraptions, I made a really cool tower that I wanted to show him. I just finished it today when I got the call that he was in the ICU. Now, Andy went ahead and posted multiple updates on this Reddit post, confirming that Evan sadly did not make it and I just I can't even imagine and so once again Andy my heart goes out to you along with all of us Fallout fans and gamers in general everyone just hopes you're doing well and that as the community surrounds you embraces you with this love that you heal over time anyway that was a few months ago and then Andy returned to reddit and posted saying hey guys it's me again I'm the one who posted that depressing post a couple of months back Bethesda responded to that post by turning my brother into a character that you could find in Nuka World. Now I'll be showing you this location in the video. It's on the southern part of the map in Nuka World. The location is called Evan's House. The Reddit post also has the location to this area. And Andy had some comments on it. He said they made him too skinny. He should be as big as McDonough. If they also gave the character black frame glasses, it'd be spot on. However, they caught his essence pretty decently. The words they used also sounded like him. However, he was also a pretty funny guy full of puns. Thank you again, Bethesda. I'm forever in your debt. And so when you visit Evan, you'll talk to him and he'll give you a Nuka recipe for a drink. And he's just a, a nice guy. And normally in a video game, when this happens, you go, thanks, see you later. And you walk away and don't think much of it. You just think you scored some sweet loot. And I think for those of us who have already explored this area, for those of us who are exploring this area for the first time, I think this might be a cool thing, whether you return there or not. I recommend just going there because you just feel something. It's just a powerful feeling knowing that this character was inspired by someone's brother who passed away and how that brother was a diehard Fallout fan and so was Andy and, and, and so are all of us and how games have just brought us together into this unique and special moment. Although it's under sad circumstances, it's still something that I think is really special and just I, I gotta say kudos to Bethesda. That's a really classy move. It's really cool of them to do that. They did not have to do this at all. And it's awesome because I think this is something that Andy will remember for the rest of his life. That although he lost his brother, the game that helped him get through this trying time recognized that and put something in the game to recognize that, to commemorate his, the past of his brother, Evan. And so kudos to Bethesda. But more importantly, Andy, I once again, dude, I want to say I hope you're doing well and I hope everything is progressing with you and I hope that the community surrounding you is doing its part in helping you heal, man. Because, you know, I, I think all of us can say that that's not something easy to go through. But nonetheless, like I said, guys, I just wanted to share this really special story with you today and 
I hope you guys can appreciate something like this, whether you love or hate Bethesda, love or hate games somehow, you know, this is just something that I think a lot of us can get behind and say, you know, this is really cool. And and thank you, Bethesda. And I hope once again, Andy, you're doing well. But anyway, that's all from me today, guys. And I will catch you in tomorrow's podcast. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.